This episode is sponsored by Trade Coffee. Instead of blindly guessing what kind of coffee you may enjoy, take the personalization quiz from Trade and receive a selection of coffees that match your taste and preferred brewing method. Delivered right to your door in Trade's compostable packaging. Be one of the first hundred people to get 30% off your first bag by using the link in the video description. Let's get down to basics. Alright, so before we can make chicken parmesan, we must first make a sauce. To make a super basic tomato sauce, we're just gonna saute a quarter of a chopped onion for about three minutes or until translucent, add a couple cloves of garlic. Saute those for about 30 seconds before adding two to three tablespoons of tomato paste and a shake of red chili flake. Saute those together for about a minute before adding a 28 ounce can of whole San Marzano tomatoes. Stir those in, crush them up, place the whole thing over medium heat and bring it up to a simmer, lowering the heat just enough to maintain a bare bubble. We're also gonna add a little shake of dried oregano, a couple stems of basil, and one cup of tap water. Or bottled water, I guess, if you're a real fancy pants. Then we're just gonna let this simmer for about 45 minutes until the flavors have melded and mellowed out. Meanwhile, over on the countertop, it's time to prep our chicken. I've got four large breasts here that I'm gonna lay out on some plastic wrap and butterfly, cutting from the rounded side of the breast towards the flat side and opening it up like a book. Then I'm gonna lay another sheet of plastic wrap on top of the breasts and pound them out using a meat pounder. You could also use the bottom of a fry pan or your bare fists if you've got issues to work out. Flattening the breasts is gonna help them cook more quickly and evenly and give us maximum surface area on which to bread. I'm also just gonna hit them with a little bit of kosher salt and freshly ground pepper before setting aside so that we might assemble our breading station. The first two platforms of which are a couple beaten eggs, preferably without their shells. Let's start with three and then we've also got some all-purpose flour, a little sprinkle of which we're gonna add to the eggs. This is gonna create more of an egg slurry that's gonna have an easier time adhering to the surface of the chicken. And then, I don't know, let's make it four eggs, a little bit more flour. And then for ease of dipping, we're spreading panko breadcrumbs out on a rim baking sheet with a generous sprinkle of Parmesan cheese. The pre-grated stuff, no need to be fancy here. Then to the flour, I'm also going to add some spices. I got some garlic powder, some dried oregano, and dried basil. Maybe about a half teaspoon each per cup of flour. Also, some freshly ground pepper for good measure. Tiny whisk those to combine, and we're ready to commence to dipping. Don some disposable gloves if you got them, and we're going to do our very best to exercise the wet hand, dry hand technique. That is, using one hand for wet stuff, one hand for dry stuff. We're starting in the flour. Once every nook and cranny is covered, we're dipping in the egg, likewise making sure that it is evenly coated in egg slurry, and then it's headed into the breadcrumbs, where, you guessed it, every nook and cranny should be covered. Now, if you like an extra crispy crust and you want to really go crazy, you could double dip. That is, head back into the egg slurry from the breadcrumbs and once more back into the breadcrumbs. Once everybody's coated, we're letting the chicken hang out in the breadcrumbs until we're ready to fry. This is going to strengthen their coating. Meanwhile, over on the stovetop, our sauce is looking pretty ready to go. Give it a taste to see how it's grown sweet and saucy with thyme. There's no need to add sugar to tomato sauce, just salt and freshly ground pepper. Make sure to fish out any basil stems set aside and keep warm until ready to serve. Next up, we're heating a quart of peanut oil to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and dropping in our chicken, frying for roughly five minutes until deeply golden brown on the outside and cooked through. This shouldn't take too long so long as your oil is hot and your chicken is thin. Fish out the pieces once they're done and let them drain on paper towels. This is gonna soak up excess oil and keep them crisp. Rinse and repeat with the remaining chicken, and then it's time to finish. So go ahead and preheat your broiler because we want to get stuff bubbly. Our chicken cutlets are headed onto a wire rack set in a rim baking sheet where they shall be topped with a couple things. First up, some fresh basil. Now I know what you're saying, basil under the broiler, but don't worry, it's going to be protected by the cheese. Copious slices of fresh mozzarella, about as much as you can fit on there. And to assist with both flavor and browning, some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. This is where you want to use the freshly grated stuff if possible. These guys are headed under the broiler for just a few minutes, just enough time to get our pasta ready. You'll notice that we got the pasta boiling in a pot right next to a big old saute pan. That's because we're finishing the pasta in the sauce. A few generous ladlefuls that we're going to put over medium heat until just bubbling, adding the pasta when it's just about a minute shy of done. We're then going to finish cooking the pasta in the sauce along with about a half cup of pasta water. This is both going to finish cooking the pasta and help emulsify the sauce and make it almost creamy but a few things that are gonna make it actually creamy. Once it's done, kill the heat, add some freshly chopped basil, some freshly shaved Parmesan, and because we're decidedly not trying to be healthy with this meal, a couple tablespoons of unsalted butter. This is how you take pasta with tomato sauce to the next level. Meanwhile, our chicken cutlets are out the oven and looking pretty awesome. 
But I know what you're gonna say. Babish, why are you doing that with your hands? Also, why are you melting cheese on fried chicken and calling it chicken parm? Well, I'll tell you why, because once we proudly plate up our poultry atop a prominent peak of pasta, we're gonna sauce up the cutlets on top of the cheese. I know that this is not the most traditional look, but it prevents the chicken's crust from getting soggy, so that even leftovers will remain pleasantly crisp. Not that there's gonna be any leftovers. Once we hit this with shaved parmesan and a little bit of fresh basil, it becomes one of the most easily demolishable dishes in basics of Babish history. This has gotta be one of my top five favorite dishes, and without question would be my last meal. So before you head to the Pearly Gates, make sure you try this at least once. It's worth the time, it's worth the effort, it's worth the calories, it's worth repeatedly scalding the roof of your mouth and having an Italian-American hangover the next day. Hope you guys try it for yourselves, let me know what you think, and remember, stay crispy out there. Thank you again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this episode. Trade has a massive amount of high-quality coffees from the nation's top roasters, customized to your preferences, and continually evolving to suit your taste. With their quick and easy quiz, you'll be matched with the roasters and beans that best suit your brewing practices. For me lately, that's been the John Brown from P.T.'s Coffee in Topeka, Kansas, a medium dark blend with chocolate and black cherry flavors and a tobacco finish. Once you've received your coffee, you can rate what trade sent to refine your selection on future orders. Be one of the first hundred people to get 30% off your first bag by using the link in the video description. And for the people in your life who love coffee, trade offers gift subscriptions too.